Hi everyone, welcome back. So it's an update on the maintenance that I started last week with the video that I showed you. So uh, kind of where we're at is, uh, I think last time I had one of the solenoids replaced, the master solenoid since been replaced. The 6393 Magneto, which has a lag, two sets of contact points in it, so we could use a slick sure start, has been installed, and that's been flight tested as well. Okay, um, all the spark plug wires have been made. I think you've seen that in a prior video. So now the last thing I'm doing is replacing all the hoses. So like here's an example of a hose. Uh, this is the return line from the fuel from the purge valve from the airflow performance uh, spider up here. Uh, this is now Teflon. So I'm replacing all firewall forward hoses with Teflon hoses. And I'm gonna go over to the bench here in a second and show you one how to do a Teflon hose fitting because they are different. And, uh, you know, the reason I'm doing it this time is they are unlimited life. So they should just last forever now and not have to replace them. One of the things I am doing, you know, you take the time to do one hose at a time because they've got oil in them now and fuel. So you can turn the fuel off, but the oil, it's in the line. So it kind of makes a mess. So I kind of do one hose at a time. It's a little harder and takes a little more time than when everything was off and the engine hadn't been run yet. But uh, it'll be a nice upgrade. You know, one of the things I probably should mention is uh, doing a lot of things here to this. So we're doing it for reliability, but uh, you know, you don't want to make all these changes all at once and then go fly it. So uh, I did put about three hours on it this week with all the other changes before I do the hoses and uh, everything was fine there. So about four landings, three hours of flight and the magneto's working good. The sure start uh, makes a difference on starting now as well. And I'm really pleased with all that. So uh, why don't we go over to the bench and I'll show you the difference between the braided rubber hoses and the braided Teflon hoses. Okay, so here we are. And I want to show you the difference between rubber hoses and Teflon hoses. So from the exterior side, they look the same. They are steel braided. Uh, that's, that is just a covering. It's for protection. So it protects the hose if it's in the compartment, maybe chafing or rubbing against something else. So I like using the stainless steel braided hose. You can see real close here, and maybe we'll take some close-up pictures. Here's a, here's a uh, stainless steel rubber hose with an air equipped fitting. So you can see here's the end that's already done. This, this, this would slide on this way, and then this goes in, and you turn this nut here till it's all tight. So this has been on there now for, I think, about eight years and hasn't leaked or anything, but uh, you got to replace them every eight years. So if you look at the Teflon hose here, it looks the same on the exterior, but inside you can see it is in fact a Teflon hose. It's white there. It uses a different fitting. So it's a three-piece fitting here. We've got uh, the, the nut that's going to slide on here. Let me show you how we're going to do that. And then we've got to put a ferrule on that Teflon. And then that all tightens up against this when you tighten it so it doesn't leak. So the first thing we want to do, normally you'll cut the end. I've got these cutters here that do a real nice job. Okay, and they make a nice perpendicular cut if you hold them straight. So then the next step is I'll put this nut into the vise so I can feed this hose into it. All right. Just do that, it feeds right through nicely, okay. I'll back it back out, and then sometimes you gotta take a little screwdriver here and just move, move this away just a little bit so we can get this ferrule on. So this ferrule, and, and I'll take sometimes a nice round ice pick just to make the hose nice and round there. And then we put this ferrule on there, okay? And I'll push it just against the vise here just to make sure it's properly seated. Okay, let's see that. It goes up inside against a little edge there on the ferrule. Okay, so now we've got the ferrule on, and then I do use the ice pick again just to make it nice and smooth and round there. Okay, and then we've got to take this fitting and push it down. Okay, we've got a nice seat right there. And so I will put it back in the vise here, just kind of tighten it, and then run the nut up, making certain I'm keeping pressure against the ferrule. And 
So we're going to take a 7 8 open end wrench and just tighten this down all the way. Okay, so now all we're going to do is tighten this. And you want to hold this back so we don't kink it. Make sure the hose rotates. Otherwise, you, you, know, you don't want to do any damage to that internal Teflon hose there. There we go. We're tight. And then what I'll do is give a real good tug. Make certain it's not going to come out or loose. Okay. I did blow out the hose before we started. I will blow it out again before I put it on the aircraft. So then the next step is to measure what you need. Cut it. Put the other fitting on, just like this one. And you end up with a hose that uh, should last longer than us on the airplane. The Teflon hoses... So somebody asked, do you ever have to change them? They are on condition. So, you know, if you have it in a, uh, an area that maybe is too hot and it does kink or something or it abrades over time, then yes, replace it. Otherwise, they should be lifetime. Thanks for watching. Hi, everyone. A little caboose on today's video that you saw. Uh, we've had a couple people ask, what do I really mean when I'm talking about omen the wires and omen the coils? So what we're trying to do here is we've made this new spark plug wire and you want to check it for continuity. Now it's going to have some resistance. In this case, this spark plug wire is about 50 ohms per foot. So we're going to use a uh, resistance meter here. It's just your typical volt ohm meter. We'll put it on a low setting there around 2K ohms. And we're going to measure by holding one of the leads here at one end of the wire and one of the leads at the other end of the wire. And we can look up here and we got about 85 ohms. So that fits. This is a little more than a foot long wire and at 50 ohms per foot. So that's what we want to check for. Make sure you have continuity um, and, and, and some resistance there. Okay. Most of the time what they'll do is open up. So what does open up means? You'll get no continuity, no resistance across. It'll be wide open. Okay. So that's for the spark plug wire. And then somebody asked about the coils. So here's the coils that sit up on top. And what I mentioned is if you remove the spark plug wires here and you put your meter right across these two terminals, you should be able to measure. On the new style coils, it's about 15 to 16,000 ohms. So 15.62K ohms there works. On the old style coils, they were about 8,900 ohms or 8,500 ohms. So between 8 and 9 on the old style what will happen, these open up, so you'll get re just open here. It should be just a one showing that's wide open, just like we're not connected. And that's how you can tell the coils have failed. So hopefully that helps uh, you understand what we mean by oming out, checking the wires and the coils.